and welcome to Christian High, where tonight, Sheboygan Christian hosts their rivals, Sheboygan Lutheran, in the first version of the Holy War at the Shore. I'm Chris Wright, along with Phil Lightbaum. Mike Martin's taking a little sabbatical. He's down in Arizona, where it's a little bit, a little bit warmer. And Phil Lightbaum is asked in November, hey, can I do one of these games? And little do we know, we had to insert him into the lineup tonight as a regular color guy, so we welcome Phil to the game here. Phil, why don't we tell, talk a little bit about your background here? You, you uh, went through the schools here in Sheboygan. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your elementary school, your middle school, and your Lutheran, and what you're doing now? Yeah, I went to Trinity Lutheran and uh, middle school and elementary school, and at high school in Sheboygan Lutheran, I was a four-year varsity player with Tyler Zastro. We played here. Lost our varsity game our junior year by two points here in the, just what I remember was the crowd in this gym gets very loud and I think that's gonna maybe frustrate some of the younger Lutheran players this year. Well, like you said, you played in this game before. You play against these these kids in uh, growing up as little kids and then you get to play in the game. Is it a friendly relationship, a kind of rivalry or it's, it's one of those you like to get them you know, just kind of stick it to them a little bit? Or what's it like to play against a rival like this? It's it's friendly, but of course we want to win. It's a it's a big game. They want to beat us, we want to beat them. But in the end, it's all friendly. And during the games, we're patting each other on the back. We're having fun with it. But of course, we got to get that conference win. Oh, that's what's the important thing. And let's talk a little bit about tonight's game. Sheboygan Lutheran, of course, made a great run to state last year. A lot of people thought, hey, let's reload. All they have left is Jacob Jersh, who's not a bad person to have back. He's 31st in the state in scoring. Thought it'd be maybe a down year, but all of a sudden, early this year, Lutheran's off to a really good start. And, you know, some new guys in there, got some young blood in there, and they're mixing well, and Lutheran's basically picking it up where they were last year. Yeah, you know, I think Verhagen has done a great job. I think this is some new guys he's working with. When he started JV here, these weren't his players. So I think he's done a great job this year. I think Jake Juris has really stepped up in a, in a new role for him. He wasn't really the, night, the loud leader that he was this year. I think that, that's been a good change for him, and good to see Jared Juris, freshman, playing so well early. Well, they're 8-2 and two overall, 5-1 and one in conference. They lost a tough game last week against Random Lake, but they bounced back. And it looks like in the conference for them to compete, you know, it's always tough to play against your rival, but, you know, if you're going to compete for a conference championship, you're going to have to catch one of these on the road, too. Yeah, especially in a game like this, you got to be rebounding more than, than Christian, and you got to just do the work in the lane. I think that's Lutheran's problem, so we'll see if Christian can uh, turn it down inside, and we'll see if Lutheran has the answer for it. Well, one of the best players on the floor besides Jacob Jers is Caleb Kelly. We saw him in the fall carry the football. He was just an animal. I mean, he runs up and down the field. I mean, it's just incredible. And he's going to have to lead the way this year. But Christian's got some big kids, too, which might be a problem for Sheboygan Lutheran, who really doesn't have any tall kids over 6'2", where I look at the lineup for Christian, they go 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". Yeah, I'm interested to see what Lutheran will do it's to stop Caleb Kelly. Who are they going to start on in him? I doubt they'll do much zone because Verhagen's not really about that. But we'll see. I know Caleb is a bigger, quicker guard than most of the point guards in the league. I think that football has helped him out with that. So he's a great uh, shooter as well as going to the, attacking to the hoop. So we'll see how much he can do against this Lutheran defense. Yeah, and with Christian being much taller than things, you mentioned before that Random Lake used their height against that. So Lutheran's going to have to obviously defend the post against Christian as well. Yep, they got Christian's got to run it down low, maybe get Lutheran into some foul trouble, make them use their bench a little bit more. We'll see if Christian can take it down low. Well, a lot of things looking forward to our tonight's game. Uh, when we return, we're going to have the starting lineup for tonight's ball game. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is 
what it feels like to be part of a team, a winning team, the action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? You always made sure I brushed my teeth. You told me that smart was cool. You always told me to dream big. To all of those parents who took the time to make raising their children their most important job, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thanks, Mom and Dad. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. time is gonna come your time is gonna come it's up to you to reach out to be that friend who comes along your day is gonna come when you make a friend you make a difference your day is gonna come friendship pass it on a message from the foundation for a better life we're back here at Christian High School. Schweigen Christian comes in at three and five, one and four in league play. And Phil, probably high expectations for Christian this year, but you mentioned that one of their key players moved away to Georgia. Yeah, Eddie Windsor, the uh, sophomore center last year who was a big force for them, moved. And uh, I think Christian soccer and basketball are heard from that. But I think without Windsor, they still can provide a good fight against Lutheran. Yeah, I mean, I liked Eddie Windsor a lot. And uh, he was so athletic and really, you know, drew a lot of problems for you and other teams in the league. And I, I really think, you know, Christian was counting on moving to the upper echelon. Now, I noticed they played basically all the top tier teams already. They've played... Cedar Grove, Ozaki, Howard's already. Uh, they did lose a tough game the other night to uh, Oostburg, but uh, they played all the upper teams, and uh, Lutheran's another one, so it's going to be tough. In a minute here, we're going to have the national anthem and the starting lineups, but uh, I'm real excited about tonight's game. I wish more people would come out to this game because it's, it's a pretty special rivalry, and uh, it's, it's a neat experience, and if you've never been to Christian or Lutheran, if you walk through the schools, they're always so clean and the people are all so nice. Uh, I wish more of Sheboygan people got to see that. They're just riding the clock. Get ready for the national anthem, so we'll take a minute here.
And now for the uh, starting lineup. Well, there's both starting lineups. Of course, Brett Flipsey, the veteran coach of the CLC, him and Kevin Brunig, the two old guys in here, and Nick Verhagen, who took over for longtime coach Todd Decker, conference ship champions last year and a run to the state tournament. Kind of strange, Phil. Lutheran seems awfully small. Yeah, that's how they play, though. Verhagen likes the small, he likes to run, and he likes to shoot threes. I see Christian starting one six five guy. We'll see if we can get it down in him. Lutheran eight and two, Christian three and five, but throw out the records on rivalry night. And Christian controls the tip. is Van Ness with the ball. There's Kowitz. 23 is Kelly. Got to keep an eye on him. He averages 15-7 a game. Right away to the height of Christian and a miss early on there by Chris Tendali. Number five's a new one for you folks. That's Jared. Jers, heard a lot about him through his elementary years, Phil. He got that right. I, oh, Jers, miss. Yep, Jacob loves to shoot. He can score quickly. But two early misses for him and a rebound by Tendali. Van Ness, that's Colwitz, 35. Maybe a walk gotten away there by Stecker. There's Kelly, and he misses. There's Jers going right to the basket. Three-point attempt by Lutheran, missed. And just another one and out as Van Ness gets the rebound. Christian's coming right back down the floor.
They start Pingle on Caleb Kelly. Interesting decision by Verhagen. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. As Kelly right gets him. the first two. Two to nothing, 6-12 left here in quarter number one. Both teams trying to feel each other out. You can't let Jers open, but he misses again. And now we're gonna get a foul on the rebound. That one's gonna go on Carl Berg. First foul of the ball game. Lutheran gonna come out in their man of man pressure. Very token pressure, Phil. Verhagen implemented that a couple of years ago on JV, and uh, he sticks with it. I think he's had the guys to do it, and it, it works, so why not keep it going? Christian up 2 0, 544 left quarter, number one. Here's the drive by Vanessa, and it's blocked. Rebound there by Pingle, and there's our first basket for Luther, and we're gonna give it to Jared Jers. Two to two. Both Jers is on the trap. They left Stecker open, so he goes to the basket, misses, there's a rebound attempt by 32. Tendali missed it, but he got his own rebound and put it in. Offensive rebound's gonna hurt Lutheran throughout the game if they let that happen. Well, we talked about that in the opening. Is the size of Lutheran gonna be big enough to handle Christian? There's a miss out there by Berg. This is Caleb Kelly trying to take Pingle. Three-point attempt is up and missed by Stecker, but another offensive rebound by Tendali. Luther now on the breakaway. Little contact made there. And I believe Lutheran will be shooting free throws. We're gonna get Ben S on that foul, Phil. Quick outlook by Lutheran. They're gonna do that all game. They're gonna run the floor. Montezel got him. Vinny a pretty good free throw shooter? I'd say so. I mean, a little down from what he expected this year from the through throw line and threes, but a lot of season to go, I'm sure he'll pick it up. He's averaging seven and a half points per game. So far this year, Christian's averaging only 10 points in the first quarter during the season, so we'll see if that changes tonight. They seem to get better every quarter, but their first quarter seems to be their bugaboo. So far it hasn't hurt him because the game is tied at four. There's Stecker on a drive. There's Kelly. They're going to get Kelly for a turnover. I'm not so sure about that, but they must have dragged his foot. That's his pull-up jump shot he likes, so, so I'm sure we'll see a lot more of that. Yeah, he's a really special athlete here at Christian. There's a nice matchup, Jers on Kelly, but Jers goes right to the rack and scores. Bendali with a miss. There's another offensive rebound by Christian. Six four three thirty two here in quarter number one. Kelly with that pull up J that Phil talked about. He hits it. Jerson Kelly again. Two seniors. They both teams have a young team, but 
both coaches should appreciate these players because they do a lot for the team. On Jacob is off to a cold shooting night. I don't see him doing that very often. That's when Luther's in trouble. They can't hit those threes. That's where they get a lot of their points from. So they're going to have to step it up defensively. Joshua Split Gerber came into the game when I missed him here. And here's our first substitution for Christian. Michael Olsum into the game. He's a big kid at 6'5". Now Lutheran in a little diamond press, Phil. Christian's got, I got a guy in the middle. We'll yep. see what Kelly can do with it. Good patience by Christian. And oh, just a miss by Olsum there, but the put pass. I believe that was Kelly. Yep. Kelly was six of the team's first eight points. He's averaging 15-7 again. And Christian's got the lead back. Nice pass, brother to brother. And back and forth we go. All knotted at eight. Also gonna try to attack. He does and scores. 10 to eight. Berg's got to be careful. He's already got one foul. Can't get two. Pingle. Yeah, Pingle scores to even the game. And there's just no backside help by Christian on that drive. It's a couple times now that they, Lutheran's gone back door. Hendricks is coming to the game for Christian. There's a three by Van Ness. First three-pointer made tonight. And now we get another foul. This one's gonna go on Christian. And that one's going on Kelly. That's one person you don't wanna get in foul trouble. Jared Vorpagel into the game. Who you got that basket? Did you see that? To Jers. Jers, which Off one? Off the inbound. Oh, sorry, Jake. Yeah, you got to remember which is which with these guys. Oh, they're going to call that off of Olsen, but I'm not so sure about that. Oh, and it just picked him clean. Splitgerber got the ball taken away from him. And another Van Ash shot attempt from out three. There by three, but we're gonna get a push off the rebound on Berg, and that's gonna be his second foul. Team number three foul against Lutheran. 13 to 12, Christian ahead. We're under a minute with 50 seconds left. Two bad fouls by Berg, one away from their hoop, and now this one right here, don't need it. Good point. Pingle back in the game. And Christian's got their twin towers in. Oh, and that's just a bad pass by Vaness. Jers picks it off, and then throws it away with a tip. Yes, it was. Bad turnover by Christian on the inbound, but only a bad inbound, or it's turnover by J J Jacob Jers. Oh, they found Split Gerber. He can't get a three, and we're gonna over the back call. An easy one there. That goes on Nathan Sampson. Lutheran can't hit outside. Yep, early on, only one three-pointer's been made in the ball game, and that was by Van Ness. And normally, 
Lutheran shoots threes pretty well, Phil. Yep, Spook covers the microwave. Got to get him hot. Good attack there by Bervaldi. And they're going to call him on the offensive foul. Bervaldi's quick. We've got to see if Pickle can stick with him. Yeah, he's very long and lanky, too. 6-3. Jerska just needs a step. Kick out. Ball is up and good. Vinny's got his fourth points of the game. Turnover, we're under 10 seconds, eight, seven. Oh, and a good hustle by Stecker to knock that basket away by Sampson. And at the buzzer, Tendali misses it. Well, exciting first quarter. It's 14-13 Lutheran. With that, we'll take a quick break. The best compliment I ever get is when someone says to me, you had breast cancer? You look at your chest, did you have operations? I said, yeah, I had bilateral mastectomy and reconstruction. That's the best compliment. Women who are told about their breast reconstruction options report feeling in control and experiencing a higher quality of life after cancer. Before you undergo surgery for breast cancer, get the facts. Make sure you know your breast reconstruction options. For more information, visit BroadAyUSA.org. Want to help? Make it easy on everyone. Send cash, the most effective form of disaster relief. CIDI.org. We're back at Christian. We're starting quarter number two, 14 13 Lutheran leads. Sampson's in tight, but he turns it over. But unfortunately for Christian, Joe Wilkie was standing on the line. Another miss by Lutheran, and it's going to stay here. Things to keep your eye on with Lutheran, if they can start knocking down some threes, and Christian keeping on the offensive glass and see if they can limit their turnovers. Jers getting a uh, much taller Chris Tendali on him. A long three by Jared Jers. And another reload for Lutheran. And that's one thing about playing here. You're really close to the uh, sides, Phil. Yeah, it's a little tight. You got to get used to it. But um, I'm sure on the sidelines, it's even worse. You got the fans right there. And easy again on the inbounds pass for Jared Jers. 16-13. Six-point run now for Lutheran to take the lead. Decker, Tendali, who's been very active today. Kel Kelly wants that ball on the post. He knows he's got Pingle on Yeah, him. and he's a good athlete. He's got good position. He's nice and low. He's trying to get the ball, but they're not getting it to him. Jake Juris knows this happens. He's sinking in the lane. He's waiting for that double team. Very good I think. And there also you could see Sampson sinking as well. They're going to let Tendali shoot. He misses. Kelly's getting and fighting for the rebound. We're going to held ball, and this is going to stay on this end of the court with Christian. Six forty-one, quarter number two. Wide open, the lefty. Wilkie misses. Pingle clears. There's Jared Jers. To Sampson, he misses Tendali with another rebound. He's had a very active half, as I mentioned before. Yeah. 
That's Van Ness. Trying to find something in the Lutheran D, which looks pretty good. Almost over the line, and he's going to say he did. Wilkie kind of tiptoeing. And another turnover. Very impressed with Lutheran's defense so far tonight. Splitker going to come to the corner. They give it to him. And he misses, but there's an offensive reason, rebound for Jared Jurse. He's got eight points tonight. And an 8-0 run now for Lutheran. There's Van Ness. Gets a layup miss. Good hustle by Stecker. And that'll keep the ball in Chris, under Christian's basket. You gotta like that if you're flipping. So you guys are flying around on offense. They're not hitting a lot of shots, but their guys are getting after the rebounds, and they're gonna go in if they keep on rebounding like that. Spooker frustrated, can't hit a three. Yeah, he was wide open. Gotta keep shooting him. Well, there's Kelly's shot. Bingo, you gotta force him the other way. If you are Lutheran, he, he's just too good. 18-15, Lutheran. Church deep, kicks it out to his brother. Another miss. This time, they're gonna get a follow. Oh no, I didn't know which way they're gonna call it. I thought they were gonna call it on Samson, and I didn't think they were gonna call it on Samson, and they ended up calling it on Samson's, and that's his second. Samson second, Berg second. Big guy's got two. Now, does Coach Verhagen like to play players in the first half with two fouls? No. Okay. I know Coach Desitel no, at North, that's almost an automatic. You're on the bench for the rest of the first half. Got that right. I don't think they have any other choice. They could put in a Holzheimer, but I don't know if he's got enough minutes and this is close game. Yep, and another turnover by Christian. Graham Vervaldi checks in, number 21. He, we saw him earlier. We'll see if he can get on the break again, get to that hoop in the open court. I don't know, we'll see if they put Pingle on him or Jared Juris. Someone's gotta slow him down. There's a good swing and there's another three point attempt by Lutheran and another Lutheran miss. Stecker's coming down the floor. There's Kelly open, no. Wide open shot for Kelly. He's gotta knock that down, tie the game up. Deep three for Jers, a miss. Stecker with the board. Here's Kelly trying to get to the basket. A lot of dribbling by Christian. Stecker, short. They could have got a better shot than that. Pull up, contested, he got to get in the lane. Just going to the basket, and I think he's going to be fouled by Graham Verveldi, and that's his, his second. Fourth team foul on Christian. Five so far with Lutheran, and we're now under four minutes in quarter number two. Wide open for Pingle, and yeah. finally a three for them. Pingle now with five points. Stecker on the drive. Oh, basket didn't want it. And then on hustling to get the rebound, they're going to get a foul on Jacob. Looked like it was down, just didn't want to stay. Christian's had a lot of shots like that first half. Normally they get the offensive rebound, but not that time. Different defense here by Christian. Who 
Lutheran going to try to swing it to get it to the opposite side. Church, oops. And then you get a foul, and I think that's going to be on Vervaldi. No. Excuse me, they're going to get it on Stecker, his second. Lutheran's got to move that ball or quicker attack that weak side two and maybe knock down a three. Very good point. You always got to swing on that situation so the doof defense moves to the opposite side. There's Splitgerber back to Jaron. Jers on the drive, kick out. Splitty finally got one. Good pass by Jerris out. He could have got the layup, but good kick out, good confidence in Spooty. Yeah, and missed a bunch before. Got his first one there. 24-15. Coach Flipsy not deciding to call a timeout. They're just playing through it for right now. Yep, pulling out to a big lead here on a run. Christian's got to do something about it. Pack it down low. Here it is. Nope. Kelly looking to get it into the much taller Christian players, but it's not working. There you go. Kowitz. Oh, they said he grabbed Splitty. Now that'll be the 17 foul, but it's not shooting because it was an offensive foul. That's the matchup they want, though, down low. I agree. Jers on the miss, Vervaldi with the board. Vervaldi on the attack, fouled in the basket. Coast to coast, nobody stops ball. Berg picks up another foul. That's his third. And that, you'll find it, here's the replay. Nobody stops ball and then Basically, Jacob bodied him up. Chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. And he missed. It was 13 to 10, favor of Christian. But uh, since then, A 14 to 7 run for Lutheran. We're at the 203 mark. They forced a lot of turnovers. Christian didn't get as many offensive rebounds, and Lutheran's offense cooking. Jacob at the free throw line hits the first. This will be the fourth free throw attempt for Lutheran in the half. And they're four for four. Lutheran, excuse me, Christians just attempted that one. Very fast half, Phil. That's how Lutheran likes it. They rather run, run, run than ha let Christian pack it down low. I think that's a big factor that Christian hasn't shot or any made any three throws yet this half. Well, Tendali had good fit position there, but it was a poor entry pass. There's an easy basket. There from Holzheimer, who checked into the game. Lutheran's going to win a lot of conference games if they get their role players like Holzheimer, Sampson, and Spookerber to play well and score points. 28 to 17, rolling under a minute 20 in the first half. There's a nice attack there by Van Esk and scores. There's Splitty, hit his last, this one is blocked. And Splitty tried to get the foul, but they're not gonna call that. Juris would have got that one. <laughs> well, he's a veteran. That ball was tipped. Jared Juris attacking. And he gets turned over, and this should be an easy basket. Oh. Whoa, a bad pass. And it worked out. Graham Rebeldi had to run it down, got it, then he gets fouled. 
Turnover turns him to two points, maybe three if he can knock it down. The second missed free throw. You know, we haven't seen that out of Christian at all this half. Pressure on their Lutheran guards. I think they need to do some more of that, make them a little rattled with the ball. You see, they get a turnover off it. Well, on this hand, on the rebound, we got a foul. So missing the free throw just adds to the trouble. You uh, foul Jers, and then he misses a free throw. And a turnover. Deep for Splitty, no good. Jers, he's got a, Kelly's got a hand on him, and they're gonna get a call from way over on the other side. The officials saw that. Good hustle by Jers getting after that rebound. Thought it was just a good fight. Should have just played on, but Jers will get another through the attempt. Missed his last attempt. He's gonna have two here because Lutheran is in the double bonus. Got the first. Thirty-three seconds left in the first half. And he hits the second. See if Christian attacks or goes for uh, one last shot. I don't think Lutheran's gonna, they want him to shoot it, and they do. Tendali got it! The big man from way out. Cuts it to six, and now a turnover. They can cut it to four. He walked, no call. Cut to four. A lot of pressure out there. At the buzzer, no. 30, 26, and a quick five points late for Christian to bring him in for. Every day, thousands of community and school groups, volunteer and government producers, technical staff and residents reach out to your community through one of the most powerful communication tools available, cable TV. Peg Access produces more new local programming each week than all the programming produced by NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox and PBS combined. Peg Access channels provide communities with a diverse, independent and local voice. Thank you for watching and for your continued support of public, education, and government access television. Usually, a texting and driving prevention ad would show you some shocking statistics, or maybe a sad family member that lost someone. They might even show you the last text they sent to scare you. But one of the most scariest statistics is about time. Specifically, the amount of time you're not able to watch the road. This video was submitted by a student through the Teens Drive Smart program. For more information on teen safety, visit teensdrivesmart.com. One of my most rewarding experiences as a dietitian has been actually quite recently, just a year ago, when I met Donna because she was so motivated and ready to lose weight and to get healthier. Well, since I've met Sue and listened to her guidance, I've lost about 80 pounds, and I have been taking off almost all my medications. To me, I mean, that's something to shout about. I just see the future getting better and better and better because I'm getting healthier and healthier and healthier. Ian Ralston was a combat medic who was injured in Iraq. When I met Ian, I knew he had to help him get his housing grant, an auto grant, and every benefit to live as normal a life as possible. And we did. PVA has helped hundreds of thousands of veterans get the care and benefits they've earned. My name is Jason Stevenson, and I work for Paralyzed Veterans of America. Paralyzed Veterans of America. Changing lives. Building futures.
This video was submitted by a student through the Teens Drive Smart program. For more information on teen safety, visit teensdrivesmart.com. Welcome back to Christian High, where Christian closed on a 9-4 run to uh, close the gap to 30-26. to uh, Leading scores for visiting Sheboygan Lutheran, you got Jacob Jers with 10, Jared Jers with 6, Josh Pingle with four. For Christian, they were led by Caleb Kelly in his eight points. I have Graham Vervelde for six, five for Bra Braden Van Ness, and five for Michael Alsom. Uh, very interesting half, Phil. Lutheran comfortable, and then a quick close out there by Sheboygan Christian. Yeah, Coach Pope has to be happy with that half. Good energy to close the half. They missed a lot of shots, got a lot of offensive rebounds, but we'll see if they can limit their turnovers and fouls because Lutheran didn't miss a lot of three throws. Christian got to hit some of their three throws. Yeah, as I mentioned before, it was 28 to 17, and uh, Lutheran looked like they were cruising along, and a couple late turnovers by Lutheran got it a lot closer. Um, one thing to watch is the uh, foul situation, Josh Pingle, I believe. No, does he have the three fouls? Carl Berg. Oh, 15. Carl Berg has the three fouls, so we'll see if anything comes into play with him. And uh, very fast first half. Um, really up and down the floor. Two plays for Christian, Jacob Stecker, and Graham Verbility both have two. Graham comes off the bench, brings a lot of energy, but if he's got the foul trouble, we'll see. Probably sit on the pine a lot. Yeah, I see uh, splitties in for this uh, to start here. Christian played better in the third and fourth quarter. They're averaging 15 points and 16 points, so they're going to need everything they got there. Uh, Lutheran comes in averaging 60 point, 62 points a game. Christian comes in. You know what's weird, Phil? They've given up 451 points this year, and they've scored 451. They, they are exactly even giving up points uh, through eight games, which I thought I've never seen that before. Well, they like to say consistent, I guess. <laughs> so either they... Win or lose by the same amount, which is kind of strange. Lutheran, it was a small lineup. We'll see what Christian can do against that offensively. Lutheran starts with it on going right to left. Shot and a miss by Jared Jers. There's Split. He likes it from there. He misses a second reload for Lutheran. Christian can't allow that with their height. That's going to be dangerous for Christian if they let Luther get more chances. Look at Caleb's hustle. And that's going to be up to the officials to decide as they look at each other. It should be green ball because it was tipped after Jers hit the ball or threw the ball up. Yeah, I agree with you. Just to stay with Luther. And they're going to Christian exactly what I said. Because <laughs> he threw it up in the air and it was tipped out of bounds by Christian. And even Caleb Kelly knows what happened there. See, he's smiling going down the side here. I think Christian will take it, though. You know, they, they, they might want the ball back. Oh, yeah. Well, the stars have come out. Church has 10. Caleb is 8. So they're getting their buckets. And there's a nice deep shot. And, ooh, they're going to get a foul there on... Jacob Jers, as he tried to stop Chris Tendali. Tendali with a bucket in the first half. Good call, bringing in Sampson. They gotta have some meat down the low because Jers can't do it all by himself. There's the lob to Kelly, and it goes. Just sat on that rim. 30 to 28 now. Church gets deep, and there's going to be a foul. Who are they going to call this one on? Kelly's talking the official, and that's who they're going to get it on. I think that might be his third, and that's not good. Kelly needs to be on the floor.
Jacob was five, excuse me, four of five in the first half. It obviously makes them now five for six. Grant for Melody and for Caleb Kelly. We'll see if this Christian offense can still score without Caleb. Yeah, I, I like to keep Kelly in there as long as you're behind. If you get ahead, then I take him out. But uh, Coach Slips is going to go with this set of lineup right now. Van Ness drives right down. And Sampson took the charge. Great assist by Sampson. Don't challenge him at the rim. Get yourself set and take the charge. Second foul there on Van Ness. Here you'll see the replay. He just went right into him. What a good job of taking the charge there by Sampson. Yeah, Verhagen always wants his, his players to take more charges. Hey, and then Sampson scores on this end. I believe that's his first basket of the night. He comes in averaging five a game. Kevin Sampson, uh, excuse me, Nathan Sampson. Here's the drive by Stecker. And there's a shot put up there by Stecker. Thirty-four thirty. Church out to Sampson. He's feeling it. Blocked by Stecker. Cleared by Vervelde. Here's Van Ness attacking again. Fantastic. Uh, I was going to say Tendali looked like he walked, but instead they're going to get Stecker with the walk. Christian's going to capitalize on that. They got Kale Killer in the bench. They could have made it a one possession game and another turnover. It was about the 620 mark when Kelly got that foul. Let's see what happened since, since then. Oh, and a bad pass. Lots of turnovers tonight. I think both teams, a little run experience. Both teams only start one senior. I know Christian plays a little, couple more seniors than Lutheran does, but a lot of young guys out there. Very good point. There's a sh shot attempt miss and a lot of battling. And if I was an official, I'd probably let them just battle. There wasn't a lot of... I mean, you're going to have some contact. A lot of tipping around. No one really had control of the ball. You just got to let. Yeah, and there was no sho shoving or pushing or taking advantage of that situation. And Coach Flipsy talking to the official about that, and I don't blame him. 439, Jersh trying to get to the basket. Good closeout D by Christian, but a three. Vinny. It's another three for big hit, big hit by Vinny there. Needed it. Confidence booster. We'll see if we can get another one soon. Good take. And they're going to call him on the travel. I'll tell you, that three-point shot is a nice weapon, Phil. He went from a four-point game to a seven-point game. Well, Luther went small again. and. It's good and bad, but when they're hitting their threes, it's good because they have five guys that can shoot it, and it's going to make Christian extend, and then Juris gets him with a pump fake. He's going to take him right to the hoop, and he can finish with contact. So I think it's a great weapon for Luther to have. Yeah, and seems real tight, 34-30, to make that three. And it's a seven-point lead. There's some of our young fans here tonight. Maybe someday they'll be playing out there. And maybe, Phil, you'll be doing the announcing here when Marty and I are long gone. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, weren't here in the opening, Mike Martin's in Arizona, where it's a lot warmer than here. Phil Lightpalm joining me, and of course we got Eric and Richard on our cameras, and Carrie is spinning the dials in the truck with the heater on. 
They make a pretty mean walking taco here as well. And there's a nice layup by Nathan Sampson as our crew took advantage of them tacos. As while we're talking about tacos, a basket for Sampson. Nice drive to the basket there by Christian Stecker on the putback miss. Going to be a held ball here. And this one's going to go to Lutheran. It was a four-point game when uh, Caleb Kelly went out, Phil, and it's been almost three minutes. And uh, Kelly's still on the bench with that three, third foul. You know, if I'm a coach, I don't want the game to get away. So you got to have your best player out there. You got to put Caleb Kelly at maybe to 150, then take him up for another quarter. You got to have a good push now because right now they can't buy a basket. They're getting close. They're getting a lot of contact on their shots. They just can't finish. Well, they're going to call a elbow foul or of some sort. Some type of technical, I believe, was called on Graham Vervelde. And that's why Juris is shooting free throws. And now it's an 11-point game. Christian's frustrated they can't get a basket to go. Officials maybe not calling it their way, but you can't have that right now. Now it's an 11-point game because of fouls and free throws made by Lutheran. Yeah, and it's a 5-1 to one free throw ratio so far. Christian with five personals, including their best player with three, and the game is getting away. Durst gonna try to attack. Good closeout D by Christian. They'll try to kick it out. They're gonna call a walk on Pingle. So many travels today too. And here comes Ke Ke Caleb Kelly. He was out for almost three minutes. Went out to 620. They were down by four. He re-enters down 11. I think it's a good decision. Now they got Pingle on Kelly. You want Kelly to be aggressive, but you know guys like Sampson, Pingle, they're going to try to get a charge and get Kelly his fourth. He's got to be smart, especially on defensively. Don't have Kelly guard Jake Jers. He's got to guard somebody else. Good point, Phil. Christian's got to find someone that's willing to shoot the basket ball. There's Stecker, short, but he gets the crawl. Rolled right over the top. You got to look at Lutheran. They had three guys on Kelly when he gets that ball in the post. Good decision to kick that out. Good knockdown by Stecker. Yeah, he got his second basket of the quarter. And there's a pick away by Vervelde. And we got a scrum, as Marty used to call it. Another held ball. I feel like I'm in a fifth grade game with all the uh, held balls. All the hell balls and all of the travels. <laughs> That's true. Been a few of them as well. Jers to Jers. This is the senior Jers, Jacob. Can't find a range with that three. Rebound, Hendricks. Kelly going to the basket. I don't know if Vervelde was ready for it. Shoots, misses. Stecker with the hustle again. Number 10's all over the place. Here's a breakout three and one. Just like at Lutheran High. Basket made. Pingle. Good passing by Lutheran there. Jake Jerson, selfish. Samson even leading the break there. You don't see that every day. It's a very well run three on one. Attack by Van S. Score it. They need 40, to stop now. I'm sorry. 43 34 is the score. Church deep. And he went right at Noah Hendricks. The 5'11 junior. 
Jake's got the size on him, and Hendricks knows Jake Juris is a great shooter. He's got a play up on him. Jake Juris recognizes backdoor cut and good find by the wing player. This is the 11th free throw attempt for Jersey. He's only missed one so far. Lutheran leads the league, tied with Ozaki and Howard's Grove, all at five and one. Cedar Grove is five and two. And sorry about that, I just jinxed you there. 44-34, minute 18. Cedar Grove, excuse me, Sheboygan Christian is seventh in the league. Deep three for Van Ness. And now that closes it to a seven point game. No, that's not, that can't be right. Yes, it is. I'll tell you, Christian always seems to come back in the last two minutes of every quarter, just when you think they're done. Yeah, especially at home here, they get that energy, the crowd's gonna carry them, and we'll see what they can do in the last 50 seconds. Look at Van Ness right to the rack. They're gonna get an early foul. Justin Landgraf, who hasn't seen much action tonight, I believe will pick up that foul. Check that, they're gonna get it on. Pingle. Here's Vanessa attacking again. We're under 40 seconds. The left hander, Wilkie, misses. And we're going to get a foul. I think this is going to be on Vanessa. And with that, that's foul number seven. So we're going to have bonus free throws. And that is Vanessa's third foul now. It's just not a smart foul. 35 seconds off, underneath you're on the hoop. You don't really have to go for it. I know you get a lot of offensive rebounds against Lutheran, but you don't want them at the free throw line. Seven point game. And Landgraf gets to get a basket. Or not a basket, but a point, we'll call it. Gets a second one off the bonus. And how about that? Two for him. Justin Landgraf, the junior. Van S. just too quick for him, but that's just the third team foul on Sheboygan Lutheran. And Coach Verhagen say, hey, gave him some space. As I mentioned, though, that's the only third team foul on Lutheran, so Christian's away from the bonus. Smart foul away from the hoop. I mean, better than to let him go right down the lane. Well, he parted the C there as Hendricks scores. 15 seconds left. Lutheran, we thought, was going to uh, pull it out, but instead, another foul on Christian. This one's gonna go on Wilkie, and it sends Jacob Jers right back to the free throw line. Sheboygan Christian has attempted, I have two free throws. And there's a miss by Jers. Oh, and out, another Jers. turnover, four, three, two, one. Nothing but net. <laughs> well, at the end of three quarters of play, it's 46 to 39. A healthy diet and plenty of exercise are keys to success, both on and off the ice. Teaching kids how to eat right will give them the fuel they need to be at their very best. Growing bodies need lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and low-fat dairy to be healthy and strong. A registered dietitian can work with your family to help you create nutritious meals you will love. And don't forget to exercise for at least 60 minutes every day. 
Visit kidseatright.org for more information. You, you show your smile to the world every day, but nearly four out of five Americans say they would smile a lot more if their teeth looked better. The good news is, healthy teeth can be safely and affordably corrected at any age. Advances in orthodontics have made the treatment more successful and comfortable than ever. Only orthodontists receive two to three years of education beyond dental school to learn the proper way to align and straighten teeth. To learn more, visit MyLifeMySmile.org. Fourteen, sixteen, and sixteen for the three quarters to give 46 for Lutheran. Christian, 13, 13, 13, 39. That means our score is 46, 39 Lutheran as we enter quarter number four. I'm Chris Wright along with Phil Lightbaum, and they're gonna get a foul on Jerth as they go inside to uh, Chris Tendali. I wish Christian would do a lot more of that, Phil. Christian, this second half has really got away from that. I know they're driving a lot more, but they really got to start pounding it more. Good finish, though. Very good finish there. Sixth point of the half there for Stecker. And just like that, it's a five-point game. This is a totally different ball game if Christian doesn't have all these fouls in both halves. Just putting Lutheran to the line, and that's going to be easy for Lutheran because they don't miss many three throws. Well, Jacob Jers, not a great shooting night, but he spent a lot of time on the free throw line. He does have 15 points. He is averaging 22. We mentioned before, 31st in the state in scoring. And this is just practice for him, shooting at the free throw line over 10 times this game. It's just it's too easy for him. Seven point lead for Lutheran, 748 in the game. And Stecker going right down Main Street. They're gonna get a foul on top. And I'll tell you the defense that was so good in the first half, it's kind of disappeared here in the second half. Christian's there should defense. never be a lane like that, Phil. I've noticed that with Christian too. Juris can get whatever he wants off the dribble, and I'm I'm surprised by that. They're, they're clapping down on him like he's going to shoot a lot of threes. He's, he, hasn't been doing that, he hasn't been doing that all game. He's been taking to the hoop. they got to start guarding him, giving him a little cushion. Yep. Here's Tendali wide open underneath, but instead Van Ness attacks the basket. And there's another foul. Oh, I thought they are going to call that on Tendali. He's going to stay here. They're going to call this one on. Jacob Berg gets the yeah, last Yeah, I think foul. it's Jacob Berg, yep. Jacob hasn't been in the game much today. Tendali deep and in. We've seen that twice now. A nice little lob for that, and it's now 48 to 43. They went right at Carl Berg there down low. He's got some foul trouble. Good decision by Christian. And there's a pick by Wilkie. He's gonna attack Jers. Pass to Stecker. Good! Stecker with eight points here in the half, and it's a three-point game. Jared Jers attacking, misses, gets his own rebound. He shoots it up and misses, and Tendali clears it away. And here's Christian with a chance to tie it with a three, or pull within one with a basket, and there's a shot by Van Ness. He'll be shooting free throws. You can see the youth of Jared Jurst there. Going strong in the hoop. Good take. Could have been a call. He gets his own offensive rebound. Tries to go back up with it. Got to get a little stronger to play in the CLC down here with the big boys. Van Ness just attempting the first free throw attempts of the second half for Christian, and he misses the first. Got to have in a close game. Got to make those three throws. He 
He makes one of two to cut the deficit to one. So a big run here by Lutheran. Almost a turnover by Lutheran. Coach Verhagen asking for a reach, and he's going to get it. Going to get that foul on Stecker, his fourth. And they needed him in the game. Big second half for Stecker, four fouls. You can't take him out now, but you almost have to with four. Jersh misses that first one. But not a bad substitution. Taking out Stecker, putting in Kelly. We haven't really talked about Kelly much this second half with the foul trouble. He's got to get going. Yeah, he's only got one basket. He scored the first basket of the half, and he hasn't scored since. I agree. He's going to have to do something offensively if Christian's going to get over the top. And again, the lanes open up. Tendali in his height makes an easy basket. Lutheran's picking up way so high, and then they're blowing right by him. That he makes the easy dump down. And it's a one point game. It was 46 39 at the half. And Jersh gets fouled on a three by Wilkie. Jersh has been doing that for a while. He knows how to get that call. A 10 3 run for Christian here in the quarter in the first. Minute and Jers hits the first one. I mentioned that Christian is averaging 16 points in the fourth quarter. That's their best quarter of the year. But Lutheran's best quarter is a 4-2. They're averaging 19. As Jers is getting to shoot three here because he was fouled on a three-point attempt. It's good to see young Lutheran team close out games so well. Their fourth quarter being their best quarter, that's good for them. He makes all three, and all of a sudden, a one-possession game becomes a two-possession game. Church now with 21 points. Oh, and there's another charge. Or are they going to call the reach before? They are. And we're going to be here a while, Phil, because there's a lot of fouls. A lot of fouls, a lot of three throws, tight game. Not surprised by that, though, and with this rivalry. 6.01 left, both teams in the bonus. Van Ness had a one for two trips not too long ago. Hits the first one here. And misses the second, we're gonna go to the other end to shoot free throws. Pack your bags, boys and girls. We might be here for a while. And hopefully there's some JV players left that could possibly come in because we might start losing guys, Phil. Christian's been really ever to go to their bench with all these fouls. And I mean, look, they, they have nine guys on the team. I know Lutheran, maybe not as deep as Christian, but at least they have more bodies to get <laughs> up there. Samson misses the first. Lutheran's played everybody with two players tonight, surprising by Verhagen. Usually doesn't get that many subs out there. Two misses for Sampson, and here's Kelly, who we mentioned before has not scored since the first basket of the half. He wants to shoot, but we're gonna get another reach. Sampson wants that charge. He wants another foul on Kelly. We'll see if he can get one. That foul went on Josh Pingle. Kelly now shooting. Hits the first. His 11th point of the ball game. That's the matchup they want, Christian. Kelly taking it on Pingle. You just gotta watch out for Samson taking that charge. Hits both free throws. 
Yeah, timeout, 30-second timeout for Christian. I believe that's their second. A lot of time left, a lot of time. You gotta think both coaches are saying, play defense with your feet and your body and not your hands because the last couple of minutes, there hasn't been much defense and it's, if it is, it's been poor. And you know Coach Brooks is saying that because their defenders, a lot of body when they're guarding Jake Juris, they can't have that anymore. They can't have him at the line if they wanna win this game. They gotta follow someone else. They just gotta get that ball out of his hands. A lot of ball game left, 5.47 left, 52-51 Lutheran. A 13-point quarter in the first two minutes and 10 seconds for Christian. They had 13 points in every quarter for their whole quarter for the first three. Split Gerber not taking care of the rock too well there. A wild shot thrown up there by Pingle. Good wall up by Here's Pingle. chance for Christian. They have not led since 13-10, but they do now. 53-52, Tendali scores deep. And this Christian crowd backing them up now. They got the lead and they've been pounding it to Tendali this quarter just what they needed to do. And unfortunately for Christian, another foul. This one goes on Wilkie. And Jersh is back to the free throw line where he's spent most of the evening. That got him to his average, 22. And over. And Lutheran back in front by one. Lutheran gonna apply some type of zone now. Maybe to keep people out of the paint, Phil. Good strategy by Coach Verhagen. We'll see if they can get the ball down low, though. See if Kelly can attack it. Van S looking. Kelly open. Three for Kelly, and a two-point lead. Jared Jers does not counter Kelly with the rebound. I think Jared Jers forced it a little bit. Three-point shots, not really his game. I think he can attack on Christian, but they'll get the ball back. Yeah, and he hasn't scored in the second half either, Phil. Christian needs a little more skip, a little quicker passes if they want to beat this zone. Tendali. Oh, it would not go. And there's a scrum on the floor. Jerse got an elbow to the face. The ball should belong to Lutheran. Verveldi now coming in the game for Christian. He'll come in. For Kolwitz. Ever since Kelly's got back in the game, Christian's got back in the game. Big factor there for Christian. Good move by Coach Phillips. He put them back in the game with three minutes left in the end of yeah. the third. When he came in, they were down by 11. Now they're up by a deuce. Jers again. Splitty. In and out. Wide open shot by Splitty, looked like it was in. Falls out as Lutheran has yet to make a basket here in the, in the uh, fourth quarter. They got all their points so far, Lutheran, from the free throw line. Wild pass there by Christian. If they want to win this game, they got to hold yeah. those turnovers. And you mentioned that. Christian wants to win. They got to take care of the ball much better. And that was not a good pass. Jers, Pingle, deep, no good, rebound, 
Sampson can't get the bunny. Rebound, Tendali. Kelly is hurt. Kelly wasn't ready for that ball. Rifled at him by Tendali, but good defense by Christian. They got the ball out of Jake Jersey's hands, made someone else shoot it. Tendali, I believe, stepped out of bounds. They're going to give it to Lutheran, but point blank range for Sampson twice, and he missed. They get it right back to him. Jers looking at the three, gives it to his brother, driving. Wilkie with good live hands. Now they're gonna get a foul. I know those Christian fans did not like that call, but the ball was poked out, no travel by Jers. Right, no travel, and then poked, 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 and finally got the poke for the foul. And guess where Jers is again, back on the line. Double bonus, hits the first. Stecker in the game, he comes in with four fouls, Phil. Gotta play smart, and gotta watch his defense. There you see the tail of the tape. Both teams in double bonus here on out. Richard on camera up here, Eric down below carrying the truck, Phil Lightbaum, I'm along with Chris Wright. And we're gonna play the last three minutes with a tie ball game. Tendali had a chance there, decides to give it up. Vervaldi, bingo! Timeout Christian. 58-56. I'll tell you what, with that timeout, we're gonna take a quick break. It's 58-56, Christian. Bye. Jen, I'm here. Okay, why are you wearing that? Because we are going golfing. I would, except I got a lot of stuff I gotta get oh, done. Oh, no, no more to-do lists, no more laundry. We are gonna go have fun. I mean, we've always wanted to learn how to play golf, yeah. right? So, it's playtime. Come on. Okay, what am I gonna wear? You can learn how to play golf with five lessons from a PGA or LPGA instructor starting at only $99. Go to getgolfready.com, get ready to play. Coming back here, what's at stake? Lutheran's in first place, five and one. Christian in conference, one and four. Lutheran, if they want to keep pace, have got to come back and win this game. An outstanding fourth quarter by Christian so far. They put up 17 points already. Teams are figuring out Lutheran's kryptonite. Got to get in the lane and Howard's random. Ozaki, tough games for Luth, and they got to pull this one out if they really want to win this conference. Yep. And you know these rivalry games, anything happens. Church, too much dribbling. Kicks it out. A three-pointer. Good! Good by Josh Pingle. Another country heard from. 59-58. 218. Oh, and a bad pass by Van Ness. He thought Stecker was going to go to the basket, Phil, and then he, Stecker stopped. He didn't need to pick up his dribble there. He's got to keep his dribble. Maybe go a crossover between the legs, attack that hoop. 59 58, 210 left. Too long to hold the ball. So we'll see. And there's the carry. That's a really good call because he hesitated his dribble right in front of the official, picked it up and go. And again, uh, when you got kids at a younger level, force up, that's a tough situation. So Christian gonna be able to attack. Now, I wouldn't pick him up full because he can drive right by you with his quickness. Pingle's gonna have to move his feet. That's Kelly's spot! And he doesn't miss from there. 60-59. And a three by Jerf. Wow. Not a bad time to have your first three of the game. 
And the first basket for Lutheran with a minute 37 because they've just been making free throws the whole quarter. And what a time to get it. Jacob Jers. Christian doubled the ball there. I don't know. I don't agree with it, leaving Jers open for three. I know he hasn't hit any yet, but that's a gutsy call there by the defenders. Jers makes him pay. With that, that's point number 27 for Jacob Jers. Kelly is 18. He hasn't disappointed the Christian crowd. Minute 37 left. Both teams with, with uh, an opportunity to get double bonus shots. Oh, there's a travel. Another bad turn by Christian. I was a little surprised by the press with the lead, Phil, but it worked. I'm surprised with Graham. I mean, why do you pick it up? He could have taken it. There's no pressure on him. There's just yep. pressure on Kelly. Well, if you're going to foul Christian, you don't want to foul number three. Church is getting deep. There's Jared Church back to his brother. You're going to play good D here, but don't foul number three. Good attempt by Stecker. He's been all over the floor tonight. And there's probably a good foul by Vervaldi. Still a lot of time left. You don't have to foul yet. I think a good thing that they did foul there. Pingle maybe could miss one here. Still 114 left. If he does make both, you have enough time that you don't have to shoot a three. Vervaldi picked up foul number four. Everybody's in foul trouble. And Pingle crawls the first one in. Gets them both, and Lutheran now calls timeout. Nothing but net. Who is the other side of the pillow? Well, we'll keep it here. As you can see, both teams in double bonus. Fail a lot of time left, though, a minute 14. You think that Lutheran's going to apply pressure again up court? I think they should. I mean, Christian really hasn't handled it all that well. And if you're Lutheran, and if Christian gets by, if you're gonna foul, make sure they don't make the basket. Yeah, I would. I was a little surprised Coach Verhagen pressed before. You know, if you're gonna just have him work it up the floor to take time off, but the one thing you don't want is to be scrambling, let Christian get an easy basket when you're winning. And uh, last time you got a turnover. Hopefully Christian can take care of the ball here. Been back and forth in this quarter. We mentioned before, Christian started off down by seven in the quarter, raced all the way to the lead. Christian's fought back, a big three by Pingle and a big three by Jers. We'll see if Lutheran takes away Kelly again. I think they're gonna double him with Jers and Pingle. Looks like they're leaving Graham open again. Pingles right up on Kelly, right in his grill. Kelly's going to attack, and that's what you're going to do is you're going to get a foul. I don't think I would have been guarding him that tight. Now you get time at the free throw line to make free throws with the clock stop. A lot of time left. 63 seconds, as a matter of fact as Kelly makes his free throw. And the senior calmly dumps that second one in. 64-62, under second, 60 seconds. There's your guy you want to follow right there, Sampson. Splitty. Pingle just made a couple. You don't maybe want to follow him. Maybe I'd follow the freshman. Not him, him. Stecker can, almost a pick by Vervelli in those long arms. 
Finally, Van Ness with the foul. And they're gonna go to Pingle back at the line. Good thing is, you know, with double bonus, even if you miss the first, you get the chance at the second. The pressure's kind of off, like if it was a bonus. I think if they're only up by one, there'd be that pressure if you'd still miss, but Pingle's usually a good free throw shooter, and you can see tonight hitting them in pressure. Thirty-six seconds left. Pingle makes it a four-point game. Lutheran applying pressure. Tendali doesn't want it out here. They get it to Van S. Twenty-eight seconds. Down four. He's Kelly looking to attack. Kelly getting triple teamed. Deep three. Good for Stecker. Timeout, Christian. The basket didn't want it, and then it fell back in. Holy cow. <laughs> that ricocheted straight up in the air and then fell back through. That touched every part of the rim there. I don't know how that went down. Jacob Stecker from deep hits a three. Watch this. Out. And in. <laughs> he almost caught that ball out of bounds. He was so deep. His 11th pass, excuse me, 11th point of the game. Pulls so, within one. How many guys are going to be on Juris on this inbound? It's four or five. Well, the, if I'm Christian, I would rather have somebody else catch it to follow them. So I would play him. I double him and then. Whoever catches the ball, I'd follow right away. Put the pressure on who's ever going to make the free throw. If you're coach for Hagen, it's your goal to set up a play to get your best free throw shooters the ball. So if it's not yours, obviously it's Pingle because he just was there. 16 seconds. There you see. Nice shot by Eric. Important for Splitty here. He's got to get that ball in. Yeah, and Lutheran does have timeouts. Christian, I believe, has one. There's the freshman, and he does get fouled. You know, you got to get it back. The smart play would have get it back to your brother quickly there. Now, now you as a freshman have to step up there and make a couple free throws. That was foul number five on Graham Vervelli, so he is done. Olsen going to come in with his height for the rebound. I believe Christian has one timeout remaining. And I think Lutheran has four. Perhagen does not use his timeout, so good to have him now. But Olsen yep. checked in for Christian. He doesn't mind shooting threes. Watch out for him. Calm and cool, but he misses. You know, he walked away before he followed through. Here's the big one to give you a, a one, a two-point lead instead of a one-point lead. And he sinks it. A one out of two trip makes it a two-point game. Here's Kelly. Kicks it out to Wilkie. Bingo! Six, five, four, three. Shot is up and just short. We're going extra time. Joe Wilkie, the left-hander, makes a little jump shot and we're playing bonus basketball. What a decision by Kale Keller. He's been hot all second half. He gives it to Joe Wilkie, who, that was his first field goal made the yep. entire game. The other entire game. I was just going to say that. Got to trust your teammates. Knock it down, send it to OT. Well, a big shot by Jacob Stecker with a three, and then a two-pointer by Wilkie, when everybody in the whole ballpark here thought that Kelly was going to take it. I thought that was a good comment you made, Phil.
It was about seconds, six seconds left on the clock when it went through. Coach Verhagen decided to let it play out. And uh, I'll tell you that shot by uh, Jared Jers was about an inch too short. Yeah, I know Jers, uh, I think he had a couple of guys in front of him. I don't think his brother was there, but I think he had a couple guys in front of him to get a better shot, but that one almost went in. A 28-point quarter for Sheboygan Christian. You see Caleb Kelly, Jake Juris, they like this. Crunch time, overtime, senior year for both of them. They're both tipping off against each other. And that 23-point, no, that's not right, Mr. Wright. And Christian gets the first chance as he traveled with another turnover fill. You gotta take care of the ball. I, too many times in one game, it just. Yeah. Well, now nerves might be kicking it in as well. 21 point quarter for Lutzer, but 28 point quarter for Christian. Kelly with his three fouls on Jers. How much is he gonna give? You gonna get travel? Yes. That's a good call. Kelly used his body there, not his hands. You see that's going to make the difference for the refs not to call it. Good yep. defense. Yep, and I thought Jers uh, traveled. I'm sure he didn't think so, though. Tendali to Kelly. Kelly going to attack. 3.33 left in overtime. Kelly going. Bingo. Caleb Kelly has Christian strike first, 69-67. Jacob Jers for three! Too much space. And the two senior leaders take charge in overtime. And we're gonna get a charge by Stecker, I believe that is. And if it is, that's his fifth. Good take by Sampson, but if you're slicker, you gotta get that off quicker. You get a man on the left wing cutting, you gotta pass it sooner. Second Christian player to foul out. Three oh two in overtime, which has been an exciting Fourth quarter in overtime, and Jers dribbles right into a bad spot. But fortunately for Lutheran, they get to keep the ball. You see Christian do that in the fourth quarter. They, they, they bring that second guy over the trap right behind Jers or whoever else. I think that's a great double team and a lot of good pressure. Yep. A little difficulty for Lutheran getting it in. Finally get it to Pingle. Down pass to Sampson, score it. Missed some earlier, but that one he put in. 72-69, still a one possession game. 240 left in OT. Great pass by Pingo there, way to penetrate and dish. Van Ness, foul, ooh, almost a chance for a three point game. Play and a tie, they're gonna get Jared Jers on that foul. Just his second, Phil. Lutheran really doesn't have anyone that to worry about, about getting fouled out, so. Unlike Christian. 72-70. Trying to pull within one. And Van Ness, oh, again, those baskets are tough. Seen a lot of balls roll out. That one I thought was down. This is Pingle. Throws it away. Here comes Kelly. Kick over to Wilkie for three. No, the hero of the regulation almost hit a big three. Jerse on the breakout. Kicks it down to Sampson. 
Little short. Van Ness with the rebound. Kelly's wide open. And he finishes. Tie game. You don't usually see Luther get beat like that, but Kelly found the opening. Caleb Kelly with 24 points to lead Christian to tie it up. Here is Jacob Jers. He's got 30. Looking to add. Hits the first. I'm just out of room over here in my three throw category for Jerse. <laughs> Ooh, that one hangs in there. 74 72. Jersk was thinking about a double. Backs off. Tendale, no. Rebound, Jared Jersk. Over to Jacob. Minute and a half. Slow it down. Lutheran with the ball and the lead. Jersk driving. Pingle was thinking about three. Chose the better decision to kick it out. Jersk kicks it down to Sampson. Can't finish. Tip no good. Tendale with the rebound. And he's fouled by Jacob Jers. Kerhagen knows that's a four-point swing right there. Missed the layup, and now potentially two more points for Christian at the line. And Jacob Jers has four fouls, which would be big if this game gets extended. Tendali sinks it calmly. First two throw attempt up the line there for Tendali. It's a big one. Samson out. Well, we haven't seen Vinny for a long time. You got to wonder, this is a small line out there for Lutheran. There's an offensive rebound and, and a foul. And a foul on Jerst. So a miss, but just as you mentioned, Phil, small lineup, you don't box out. Long rebound. And now Van S with a chance to take the lead for Christian. Puts it in, we're tied. Minute 09 left. Missed the second, Tentali, another rebound, and another chance to take the lead. That uh, one's on Jers, that's number five. They got the foul, they believe, on the wrong guy. They were both there. I don't, I don't know who it was on, but of course, Juris is going to make his case. It was on the other Juris. See if the official changes the call. He doesn't. I don't know. I'd have to see the replay. They were both on top of them there for the rebound, but of course, we don't know who followed. Great right. game by Jake Juris, though. Tendali can't make the free throw, and I'll tell you, that's the fourth missed free throw of overtime by Christian. Watch out for another offensive rebound, baby. Make it four in a row. It looks long, but it's good. Christian takes the lead, 75 to 74. But more importantly, Jacob Jers has fouled out of the ball game, and Lutheran's gonna have to have someone else step up, Phil. 
Jake Juris doesn't just make threes. He doesn't just score every basket. He penetrates. You see, he can get to the hoop and dish it to guys like Sampson. They just need to finish it. Now without Jake, they're really at a loss. Yeah, and you mentioned that Lutheran is really young. And basically now you have sophomores and freshmen on the floor uh, to take charge of a first big rivalry game like this. But uh, who knows, we saw Joe Wilkie hit a shot, be a hero, so somebody for Lutheran's gonna have to step up. I know uh, Mozzella, Vinny just got in there, hasn't really made a basket in a while, but you never know, he can get it hot, split Gerber. I think Jared Juris could penetrate, kick out, and hit a big three-pointer. Really well, put the pressure on Christian. Well, Jared Jersh is averaging 12 points a game. Spuddy's averaging 11 points a game. It's not like they're uh, real soft, but with the lead, Christian also gonna apply some pressure here, which I think is interesting. Obviously, Jersh is gonna try to get it, and a very, just a token defense there. Christian does not need to foul. There's a minute six left. Wilkie penetrate down. Sampson hits that one. He's missed some before, but every time you need a big bucket, he seems to get it, and now they have the lead. Kelly just going to work. Pingle misses it. You know, and I don't think that Kelly's picked up that fourth foul at all since way back at the 320, excuse me, 620 mark of quarter number three, he still has three fouls. Yeah, I've been watching him, and he's still guarding Jake Juris when he was in, and just using a lot of body, not hands, as he makes the three throw to tie the game up at 76. His 25th point. Oh, another one rolls out. We're all tied at 76. No time to panic for either team. Lutheran doesn't have to go real quick. Wilkie not close enough to get a five second call. Jared Jurst just dribbling around. Almost double dribbled. Sampson, excuse me, Pingle. We're down to 22 seconds. Here he goes, Pingle, and he's bombed on a ticky tack. But they've been calling all those, Phil. They've been calling that even in the fourth quarter, real early calls, because I think they know Christian wants the foul, but right there, I, you gotta let them play. Yeah, and they, you know, you're tied, so you don't have, I mean, you're just putting a guy on the free throw line. It's gonna if come down to who makes free throws and doesn't. The whole lane, though, is open up there oh, for yeah. Pingo, so maybe it was. That does, ooh, that did look good, but it went in. We're at a high view here, so you can really see angles pretty well here, and that one looked a little deep, but. He's been pretty clutch in making those free throws. And missed that one, and Van Ness with it. And we're on a one-point game, 16 seconds left. Van Ness right down Main Street. Ventali puts it in with the lead. We're down to nine seconds left. Timeout, Christian. Chris Tendali, deep in the post, just turned around field and bounced it off the uh, backboard. I know there wasn't a lot of time left, but Caleb Kelly didn't touch the ball that possession. That surprises me. And uh, who found him on that one? Uh, Hendricks found Tendali on that one. Good playmaker ability. Just got it in there, and Tendali with a great finish. Well, they put some time back on the clock. There's now 10 seconds even. Christian will be out of timeouts. We are on an odd number. It'll be interesting to see if there's any contact officials call. They've called a lot of really close. Good shot there by Eric. You gotta think they're gonna want Jers or, oh, I don't know, Pingle to attack somebody, maybe get the foul, but I don't know, maybe a smart decision by Coach Flip to the call time out there. There was only six seconds left when they got the inbound in. He might just want him to play that. Well, and Coach Verhagen, I think, wanted to call timeout that time. 
We'll see what Christian can do here defensively. Make sure nothing deep. Christian gonna let Lutheran catch it in front, which, you know, I would probably have one guy up to slow them up a little bit up the floor so they don't get to do what they want to. There's too much time. 10 seconds is a yeah. lot of time to get that ball Yeah, up. and they're gonna get an easy shot in here. Here we go. Here's Church. He's driving, and we got a timeout by Coach for Hagen. Well, I'm not so sure about that one. You just took off three seconds. You have to get the ball in. You, know, you should have had something set. They're asking where they're going to get the ball. I know Coach Verhagen has a lot of good plays drawn up on that sideline there to get quick scores. I think he's drawing up another one right now. We'll see if Christian can defend it. Michael Olsen comes in the game. They put a bigger guy out there for anything in you know, if there's any penetration deep or so Lutheran doesn't get a second shot, you put in your big 6'5 kid. Nice decision there by Coach Flipsy. I think you got to place Elsom on the ball, take away a lot of options with his length. Good decision by Flipsy. Yeah, that's why I don't know if I would have had Lutheran call time here because sometimes you're going to end up going backwards when you got to want to go forward. I agree with that. And uh, you are a shorter team. They're going to put, nope, yep, just as you said, they're going to put nobody on the inbound pass, which surprises me. There's Pingle, five, four, three, no shot, Garrett, no shot, game over, Christian wins. Well, Phil, thanks for coming. I'm going to try to get a great interview. You did a wonderful job tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was and, fun. And it, good luck back at school. You saw a great game, Phil. Thank you. 78-77, Christian. I'm going to see if I can get a couple kids for an interview. Uh, with that, we'll take a quick break. America, America's service members and veterans are strong, forged out of bravery, sacrifice, and duty. Sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. I will grow a heart so strong that hospitals will take Tuesdays off. If I ride, road rage will turn into laughter. And oil tankers will haul chocolate milk. And I won't be a boy or a girl. I will just be a rider. I did the most shocking thing today. It was just something I never thought I'd do. Did your parents find out? My mom cried. What'd you do? from foster care. Just being there makes all the difference. Are you connected? If you don't have access to internet, you aren't going to be able to take advantage of anything. The internet is essential to the basics in life, housing, health care, employment. I personally benefited from broadband because I was able to fill out different applications and I'm pretty positive that I'll get another job. To get connected, call 866-765-9118 or visit changeyourtomorrow.org. If everyone had access to the internet, people's lives would be changed. Connect today. Change your tomorrow. Hi.
Kelly. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow, that's all I'm going to say. 78-77 victory for you guys. I'll tell you what, you got 13 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter, 13 points in the third quarter, 28 points in the fourth quarter to go to overtime. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, I think it's just we were in the game the whole time. We wanted to stay with them the entire game, and when we came into the fourth quarter knowing we were in it, we just turned it on as a team. It wasn't any individual effort. It was pretty even throughout the entire game, defensively and offensively. Exactly. You got a kid like Joe Wilkie hits the shot, hadn't made a basket all game. I mean, Kale, everybody in the house thought he was going to shoot the ball, passes it. The left-hander puts it in there, so a lot of unsung heroes is exactly, exactly right. The thing is, Joe's been gone pretty much all of Christmas break, missed all practices, and is here for one practice. <laughs> Came here, did his job, and he made a big shot, I guess. So, yeah, it's just a big team victory. Well, I'll tell you what, it was. It seemed like you guys, like you said, just kind of hung around, hung around, and, you know, a little bit of free throw or uh, foul trouble there, and so you had to rely on other teams and a team effort. and. Did you have a plan going in tonight to maybe use your height a little bit against a little bit of smaller Lutheran team? Um, a little bit. We more just, we have a very good big guy. Chris is very good. And we kind of, we knew we would have a mismatch. We wanted to get it um, down low as much as we could. But, I mean, if it wasn't there, then we just tried playing through the rest of our team and getting so a little bit, but it wasn't like our main game plan. To, so what do you think of these rivalry games? They're awesome. I mean, I'm a sophomore, so this is my first time playing, and, and this was amazing. Just being in even a small gym like this, just with the fans roaring, it was just awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank Stay you. here to you. Senior. Senior. I had to feel nice. Yeah, it did. It was awesome. And again, as I mentioned before, a complete team effort and things. I got to admit, Coach Slipsy took you out. You got that third foul with 620, and you guys were down by four. You went down to 11. I kind of questioned him a little bit, keeping you on the bench for so long. You never picked up a foul after that, and then you, you, you got like 15 points in the, the, the rest of the way and to help your team out, and yeah. just to stay out of foul trouble <laughs> was probably key for you. Yeah, it was. Well, I, I guarded JJ the whole game, and he's, he's an awesome player. It's hard to guard him because he's got a shot, and he's got he can take it to the basket too, so I give him props. But, yeah, I think, I don't know, just staying out of foul trouble was big and key, but, yeah, I trust the coach in bringing me out, so, yeah, was an awesome game for us too. <laughs> Yeah, it was an awesome game, and it, it was a very exciting game. And as I mentioned before, you got team efforts from everybody there. And, yeah. and I don't know how many baskets for both ends. It seemed like the ball was going in, and it would pop out. And then yeah. I'll tell you what, that I don't remember who hit the three over there. I think Stecker hit the three to bounce straight up in the air yeah. and everything. Yeah. Weird rolls tonight, too. Yeah, yeah, we were getting a bunch of weird things. But our guys were just going hard. We were rebounding more than normal, too. So I think it was just, just a battle the whole way. Well, I know, like I said, for you and Jacob, you played against each other for a number of years, and I saw you on the football field, and I didn't get to talk to you, but I might tell you what, you, you ran a hard fall this fall, too, but <laughs> carrying it over to the basketball season. Let's talk about one more thing here. You guys kind of struggled early on. I think there was a little bit of high expectations. Kind of win like this can maybe project you to get move up a little bit in the standings. Yeah, I think early on in season, we haven't been doing well. I know we have a great team, and all of our guys just work really hard, and I mean, we were projected to be top in the conference, and we ended up kind of starting off str not strong. So I think this win was just big for all of us, just to get, a, get our hopes up, and uh, hopefully we can keep the ball rolling. So. Yeah, thank